talking about just the competition for roster spots. And I mean, as a head coach, that's, that's gotta be something you want, right. In terms of just uh, having intensity at your camp and, and having guys battling for, for jobs. Yeah. I, I think any year you, if you want to take a step as an organization, you need, you know, more quality players pushing for, uh, for roster spots than are actually available. You want guys to, to put the organization to tough decisions. You want, you know, the guys that are coming into the league, be it 16, 17 years old, uh, you want them to come to camp with purpose and and try and claim a spot. And consequently, you end up in a in a spot or position where you're, you know, you've added depth. You've added that next layer of, of depth to your to your lineup. And, you know, if you want to evolve and become a upper echelon team in the league, you need depth at every position. And we certainly feel like, uh, you know, we're a step closer to, to that uh, than we've been. I want to ask you about your goaltender, Ethan Bonaventura. I mean, this is a guy that has kind of not waited in the wings. I think that'd be unfair because he's definitely made an impact for your group. But, you know, now with uh, Braden Peters graduating out of the league, this is this is Ethan's time to shine, right? Uh, how excited is he for the opportunity to take on that number one role with you guys? And, and how excited are you guys to, to kind of see where he takes it? I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's uh, a lot of times at that position, there's one net and two goalies. And, um, you know, Braden has certainly been a stalwart for us for a long time. And and Ethan has learned and grown and, and given us good minutes over the last couple of years. But the reality is it's it's his time to to really claim the claim the opportunity and claim the starters role. And that would be our expectation for him. And um, so that's really important that he has that mindset of being a starter and understanding the uh the responsibilities that come along with that and I know he's he's looking forward to the challenge uh when Braden's been uh down at times in the last couple of years and and we've had to really go on a long stretch with Ethan at the helm he's he's done an excellent job for us and um it's difficult at times to to play that waiting game, the long game, so to speak. And I think every player wants to be shot out of a cannon in terms of how it goes for them. You want to have instant success and you want instant opportunity. And the reality is this is a good league. It's a hard league and, and it takes time to really evolve and become the player you want to be. And which is why this league is predominantly, you know, the upper echelon players are usually in their third, fourth year in the, in the league, it, it happens for a reason. And, and Ethan's now entered his third league and, and we'd expect him to take a step for sure. You talk about those older players, you've got a two on your roster, uh, John Chagall and Tyson Galloway in particular, who are off to NHL camps this week. But, you know, these are both guys who have kind of been through the NHL draft experience, have been through the pro camp experience. And now as 20 year olds, I mean, these guys are playing to, to kind of, catch the eye of NHL scouts and, and and earn contracts, right? And, you know, when you look at those two guys and maybe you look at last year with Riley Fiddler-Schultz doing that and earning a pro contract at the end of the season, uh, you know, how much how much motivation can those guys take and learning experience from what Riley went through last year in terms of trying to replicate that this year? Well, without a doubt, I think Riley was a a, a prime example of a, of a five-year Calgary hitman and um, became our captain and really just uh, – embodied what what we wanted our organization to be about and I think that you know Sean and and Tyson are both very similar personalities and and you know important uh people in not only in our lineup but in our organization and those guys are are quality quality 20 year old players and uh from a leadership standpoint from an on ice performance standpoint they really do embody what we want our guys to be about and and when you come back as a 20 year old it's it really is with the push to uh, set yourself up for, for the future and, and the opportunities that there's no question how big a role they'll play on our team this year. We really want them to, to shine and, and, you know, put themselves out there for all 32 NHL teams and, and see what comes of it. And uh, both of them have the experience of, of going to NHL camps in the past. And now in the present, they, you know, they're attending different camps and, those are all, you know, we talk a lot about toolbox experiences. You put those in the toolbox and 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 really rely on knowing about yourself that you can play at a, at a higher level. And, and when they come back, 
the expectation is for them to to really drive this this thing forward for us and you really do need positive you know 20 year old uh, presence in your locker room on the ice uh, in all aspects seemed like especially during the second half of the season last year, Steve, every time we looked at a Calgary Hitman score sheet, Carter Yakinchuk's name was on it. Uh, I mean, this guy just really kind of grew into that power play quarterback, just all situations kind of roll. But, you know, now he enters his NHL draft year as a late 2005 birthday, and I'm sure there's heaps of pressure on him, right, and thinking about it. But how do you temper that, and how do you maybe take advantage of some of the hype that might come along with him to help him develop and help him get to that place? And you know, be a be a even bigger contributor on your team a year out here. Yeah, well, I I mean, I think you you were very accurate, and our power play was uh, uh, really came to life in the second half of last year, and and now directly correlates with with Carter, Oliver, Tull, Graydon, Seidman, um, really getting to a place in their WHL career where they're able to be that guy, you know, and be that combination of players together. And, and Carter's obviously a huge driver of that his, his offensive talent is, is undeniable. Um, you know, he's creative. He's got a, you know, a wicked release and, and is able to be goalies clean, which, um, you know, is a, in itself is a, is a weapon, but his vision is as good as his shot. And, and so there's lots to like there. And I think that for Carter, one of the most important things this year is just being in the moment and and it's really easy to project yourself down the road to what's possible and what might be but uh, the reality is you want to build a body of work over the course of the season day after day and um, you know we talk a lot about not expecting perfection around here we expect progression and he's a prime example of a guy who at 16, he's finding his way in the league. And now as he enters his, his third season in the league and his progression has been impressive and, and he's got to continue on that path and, and round his game out in all aspects, as does every single player that's playing in our league needs to continue to get better and progress, pro progress and, and, uh, and find themselves, you know, really rounding out their game, so to speak. And, and, but Carter is a, is an impressive talent and, He's got a very quiet personality. He does his talking on the ice, and and uh, and part of that is is just a I think a real self confidence that he can be a difference maker in the lineup. 